Hello, this is Kevin Donahue with ProTivity, welcoming you to a new edition of Powerful Insights. We're producing a series of podcasts on GRC programs and technologies, obtaining perspectives from ProTivity leaders and subject matter experts around the world on GRC drivers, innovations, and challenges in their markets. This episode features my conversation with ProTivity Managing Director Scott Boulderson and Associate Director Nicholas Perna. Scott is a leader within our Business Performance Improvement Group, while Nicholas works within our technology consulting practice. Both are based in London. They offer their viewpoints on GRC developments and advancements in their market. Scott, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, Kevin. And Nicholas, it's great to speak with you as well. Nice to be on that call with you, Kevin. So, Nico, let me start asking you some of the questions we have here around GRC. First off, what are you seeing as some of the GRC drivers in your marketplace? Well, that's a good question. So, what we see across our clients is that business and technology change is uh, accelerating. So, companies are, are really keen to put in place technologies like GRC just to make sure that they are on top of new regulations. What I would like to add as well is that risk landscape is um, evolving pretty quickly with uh, digital transformation. As another example, companies' reputations can be manipulated via social media, for example. So those are key drivers that push companies to think about GRC as part of their IT infrastructure, I would say. Yeah, and I just add to that, Kevin. I think that what we're seeing because of those more non-industry aligned regulations such as GDPR, we're seeing real demand outside of those traditionally regulated industries like the financial services. So non-financial services companies are starting to understand what effective risk management is about and starting to value effective risk management, not only for regulatory requirements, but also from an enhanced operations perspective and ensuring they're managing the risk properly. So, so certainly seen a significant uptick in demand outside of financial services in the last couple of years. Yeah, that's interesting and I guess expected as well. Nico, I next wanted to ask you about innovations. And by the way, we'll explain that. I know you're at a conference and we're hearing some background music there, which is fine. But Nico, what sort of innovations in GRC are you seeing in the market and with your clients right now? Yes, I would probably highlight one key innovation that we definitely see across uh, a number of our clients, so uh, which is basically BI reporting and data analytics tools. So clients are really keen to integrate the GRC tools with advanced BI reporting technologies. Very interesting to see that a lot of them are considering the concept of data cube, so being able to to get multiple sources of information of data from an ERP system, for example, combined with data from the GRC to make sure that they can produce very relevant reporting for decision makers within the within the company. So that's definitely one key innovation that we do see across our clients. I'd also just add to that, Kevin, in terms of the concept of creating a GRC ecosystem, an ecosystem of technology providers that complement the core GRC platform. So we're seeing innovation around workflow and workload management around the GRC platform. We're also seeing innovation around automation of risk management activities, again, around the GRC platform. So looking at third-party providers to really add into that GRC ecosystem to, to both automate and more effectively manage workflow. And next, Nico, I wanted to ask, kind of around these third parties that Scott just mentioned, what are the key tools that uh, you're implementing in your market right now? So we we do implement a lot the, the ProTivity GRC solution, which is called the, the Governance Portal, which is an integrated GRC solution. And uh, a lot of our clients use the tool for risk management, for internal control, internal control self-assessment, for internal auditing, but we also see uh, new topics like uh, vendor risk management, for example, or GDPR compliance. So, um, yeah, and around the governance portal, we do see a lot of interest in Microsoft tools. So, um, as we said before, so we see a lot of uh, interest with BI reporting tools, and, uh, and Power BI, for example, is definitely one Microsoft tool that we do implement a lot for our clients uh, within, within the UK, but also within, uh, within Europe. Yeah, again, I just extend that a little bit further. Outside of Power BI, there are other Office, you know, Microsoft Office 365 tools that are available to most of our clients, such as Microsoft Flow or Microsoft Forms. And in fact, we're helping one large financial institution at the moment uh, essentially automate their risk management reporting function, which at the moment is very manual, very burdensome. 
you know, relies on over 100 different sources of data. And by using the Microsoft suite of tools, we're able to automate that and make that more accurate and more effective. So, so some of these tools don't have to be big investments. They're often tools that are already available to our clients. And I think both of you have touched on this uh, concept of integrated GRC. What are some of the challenges organizations are facing right now as they pursue integrated GRC? Yeah, that's a good question. So from my perspective, what, what I definitely see as a challenge is a change management within, uh, within the organization. So especially with, uh, with integrated GRC, you've got a lot of different teams involved with the final solution. And change management is always a challenge. So making sure that training is done across the, the user community and making sure that there is a proper adoption of the solution, not after go live, but right after the beginning of the project. This is a key thing of implementing an integrated GRC tool. I think that's what we could say as well as part of the implementation of the of GRC tool is that with all the new digital technology that we see in the market and interacting with the GRC tool like RPA, like machine learning, we see an increased volume of data and that's definitely Another challenge that organizations are, are facing, making sure that they use or they find the right way to use to, uh, or to report on this big volume of data that we see going in the tools like, like GRC. Yeah, and I think what we're seeing in that new marketplace for integrated GRC, that sort of non-regulated environment, who are starting to see the value in this is, is really all the challenges around building an integrated platform and its use in the business and its, its culture of an organization and GRC being taken seriously and, and not treated as a compliance activity, but a value driver for the business. And uh, that will continue to be a challenge across our markets. These have been great insights. Thank you. Let me, let me wrap up with a final question here. And again, I think you've touched on this a bit. But Nico, how, how do you see GRC programs becoming more digitally focused, aligning with digital transformation that's going on throughout some of these organizations? Yeah, so I think that this is really the beginning of the journey, and I think that clients, uh, generally speaking, are becoming more aware that GRC is part of the IT ecosystem and that they need to integrate with digital uh, technologies like RPA, data mining, machine learning. One good example is control testing, for example, just to drive more operational performance, I would say. I think that another thing to mention here is the governance frameworks with the digital transformation I think that companies realize that they do need to have the right governance framework in place to be able to manage the risks linked to those new technologies. So that's definitely a key topic for us as a consulting firm for the coming years. Yeah, I, I guess I, I'd probably reiterate some of the points I made earlier, which is you know we're already seeing demand from our clients in terms of understanding how they can leverage you know, some of those digital transformation practices into their GRC programs through the innovative use of, of different technologies and different approaches to change management, such as Agile. I would also say, though, that for any GRC program, unfortunately, there, there is a perception that GRC program is an inhibitor to digital transformation, and it, and it shouldn't be. It should embrace and be an enabler to more effective digital transformation. Uh, that's all I'd add at that stage. Scott, Nico, again, thank you for your insights today. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for listening today. You can find more information and podcasts offering perspectives on GRC from around the world at fertivity.com slash GRC.